Hey, peace and black power. Peace and black power. It's Underground Warrior TV. I'm back with another video. Y'all know what it is. If this is your first time coming into my channel, go ahead and mash up the likes. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. I'm back with another one. I'm back with a prolific, something dynamic for your mind. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said before, black family, in order to get to black people, in order to destroy black people, you must use black people to destroy black people. Our constant um, struggle uh, in this world as black people has been our own kind who participate in the um, demise of our people. You know what I'm saying? It is our own people who uh, who are boule, who do the bidding for white supremacy. And we're talking about 27 years later, the feds arrest uh, Keefe D. Dwayne, Keith Dwayne, Keith Dwayne Davis, a.k.a. a.k.a. Keefe D. L.A.P.D. The federal government all played a role in the assassination of Tupac Shakur. We have to pay attention, black people. You got to be real keen and pay attention to timeline. When you've opened up the Freedom of Information Act on the Tupac Shakur case, you will see a lot of things in the Freedom of Information Act that raise eyebrows. Why certain entities wasn't investigated when it was known to make physical threat to kill Tupac Shakur. You see what I'm saying? So when you open up the Freedom of Information Act, you'll find that the war on Tupac was for real and it was the United States government who orchestrated the murder of Tupac the Shakur. Timeline. You feel what I'm saying? You have to pay attention to each sequence of events that was happening around Tupac. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, I'm a conspiracy theorist. When I told people back in the day that any time you have an FBI file, the FBI watches you. You're up under surveillance constantly, especially being a rap artist. Being a famous person, you're watched even closer by the United States CIA, the FBI, because you got money. And with money, you could cause what they call a revolution. Something that got Jimi Hendrix killed when Jimi Hendrix was secretly giving money, donate money to the cause of the Black Panther Party. So we have to pay attention to the timeline and events to see the conspiracy lodged against Tupac. If any American citizen have what is called an FBI file. That person's or individual is under surveillance. Can we establish that Tupac had an FBI file? Why did Tupac have an FBI file from the beginning? See, we got to go to the emphasis of why Tupac is not here today with us. Why did Tupac have an FBI file? Well, easy. His mother, his father, his stepfather were part of a revolutionary army. Black Panther Party, All People Party, these people was deemed as communists. Seeing to me 
that Tupac was harassed because of his background, his political views, his mother's po political views, his father's political views, her organization political views was a threat to the United States government. We know if we follow history that Ronald Reagan during his time in the 60s, 70s as the governor of California helped dismantle the Black Panther Party. Tupac marked for death being a Panther baby. This is where I'm going with this. Ronald Reagan and the CIA under J. Edgar Hoover helped dismantle the Black Panther Party by infiltrating the party, killing its members, and locking the members up as political prisoners. That's what happened to Matula Shakur and Geronimo Pratt. Geronimo Pratt is Tupac's godfather. Matula Shakur also was Tupac's stepfather. Tupac's father was also in the Black Panther Party. I did not know that. He believes, Tupac's biological father believes, that Tupac was murdered by Cointel Pro, 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 Cointel Pro. Tupac rap lyrics reflected the struggle that raised eyebrows with the music industry, with the fabric of the American uh, culture. It, it rattled politicians. Tupac's music rattled politicians. Pat Buchanan, uh, Clinton, uh, Del uh, Dolores Tucker. You know, these people was re very upset at Tupac. Timeline. Oakland police assaults Tupac Shakur in 1991 for no apparent reason that he had the last name Shakur. Matula Shakur, stepfather, was accused of bank robbery. Also helped the escape of our sister Ashala Shakur, who lives in Cuba in exile, who was, a, who was framed for killing uh, deputies and deputies gun hole shoot another deputy trying to apprehend Ashada Shakur for no reason, her and her comrades in the 70s. Ashada Shakur lives in Cuba. So the government hate the Black Panther Party. Anybody with the last name Shakur. So, Oakland police, 1991, assaults Tupac. They proclaimed he was jaywalking. They taunted him because of his last name. They slammed him to the concrete and messed our brother face up and his head up. Messed up nerves in the top of his head and Tupac couldn't grow hair in certain places. He grew patches. That's why he went bald. It was bald by force, not by choice. The Oakland police assaulted him that bad, slamming his face and head to the concrete. Fast forward. Let's go to October 31st. 1993, Pac tried to stop two white men from beating a black man down. Pac in Atlanta on a particular street 
and he tells his limo driver to stop. He see two white men beating down a brother. These are off-duty police. Park didn't know. As he intervened, they pulled a gun out. He shot both police. Get away with it. You, you see where I'm going with this? He's the only man in history that shoots the police and do no time in the penitentiary. Police is one big game. Think about it. Timeline, y'all. November of 1993, fake rape case. Ayanna Jackson, government plant. Her and the Negroes, her and the Negroes that was with her helped orchestrate the shooting at Quad Studio. Government involvement. Fast forward. 1994 Quad Studio shooting. Government plant. Helped set that up. Check this audio clip. I want you to hear. This is from Monster Cody Scott. I think his name is Sankia. His name, he changed his name to an African name, Sankia. But uh, him and Tupac in conversation on the phone, Tupac mentions out of his own mouth that Ayanna Jackson and the Negroes was together who set him up with the fake rape case, then they turn around and set him up with the quad studio shooting. Tupac checks himself out of a hospital because he knew that the powers to be were trying to assassinate him then. Check it out. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for the fair use for purpose such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute and might otherwise be infringing nonprofit education, personal use tips to balance in the favor of fair use. you was trying to send, mm -hmm. but you know, they had me on the Hannibal Lecter trip. Yeah, I was wondering what happened, because they do that to me too when I was up in there. Yeah, I heard. Certain people I couldn't write to, like Matulu, they opened my whole letter to him. Oh yeah, well you know, I, I would get at Matulu, but I will go around a long way, right? Uh -huh. Through this cat named Robin. Uh -huh. and, or, and when I get at Watani, I go another way too, right? But I, I was like, scared to do that shit. I didn't want nobody else to get the letter, because this other cat wrote me and said that you talked to him and it was cool to send it through him, but I was like, shit. Yeah, yeah. I know he said that. Right, right. <laughs> Everybody know I'm trying to get at you. Hey, that was a good shout out you gave me, man, in the vibe, man. Oh, you know it's Appreciate all real, that, man. I've been trying to tell you to your face for the longest time. I'm telling you, hey, hey, but you, hey, do you, remember, you don't remember when we met, huh? Nah. Over McCool. Why Tony said it was up in L.A., right? Straight up, man. I don't remember that shit. Me and you, I'm telling you who it was. It was, it was me, you, uh, it was Yaka Seedsway, Asanea, uh, Dara, we was kicking over Makungu's pad. I still don't remember that shit. Man. Yeah. You know, I'll be butted out, though. Man. I know, homie. Hey. There ain't no secret. Hey, hey, you got my number here, though. Nah. You called me, remember? But I got that number from um, Mo. He was oh. with me. He dialed the number for me. Okay, take this number down. Okay. 909-243-2889. Hey, you know we start shooting the movie next month, right? You do? I'm telling you, man, I want you to play me, man. I want to play okay, you. Okay, dig this. Nobody okay. play you. Dig this. 
check us out. Uh, the producer, I mean the um, director, right, mm -hmm. is Antoine Fuqua, a young brother, 28 years old from uh, Baltimore, right? But he's straight, straight up cat like us, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he's a good cat. We got a hella pull with him, right? Mm -hmm. We ain't even did casting yet, man. Mm -hmm. You know? You got to put me down. I'm telling you. Got to I'm telling you, I didn't see your shit. I just seen Juice. Oh, you oh, no, no, no. I just, because I, I was locked up all them years. Oh, shit. I just seen your shit, man. Word. Yeah. I just I the rent. Who was that, last night? Yeah. When I was on, up in that jailhouse, I wrote one, too. I'm supposed to be getting that shit together. What else you doing, man? Hey, man, you wouldn't believe I got some dope-ass lyrics. What? I'm serious. I got some shit called Level 5 that's bomb shit. What? Wait, <laughs> up. Hey, I'm talking about A. You got to come in the studio then. I'm telling I got some shit. So when you going to come through? When can I come through? Anytime you want. I'm in the studio every day. I'm finishing my album. I'm doing the, a double album this Christmas called All Eyes on Me. Hey, man, hey, I'm telling you. I got you. the song with Dre. I got the song with Roger. I got a song with George Clinton. That shit is fat. Hey, hey I got Sister Soldier coming. If you come, nigga, we could do the bomb. I'm telling you. Together. Hey, check this out. Check this out. I'm telling you, that shit you shot, man, uh, so many tears. Yeah. I mean, I burst out in tears when I heard that shit. You like that shit? Man, you shot that shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, yesterday I was cleaning up the pad. Uh-huh. And I was, me and my wife, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm cleaning up the pad, and uh, uh, Lord knows was all right. Uh-huh. And that, the last verse, yeah. that shit hit me and froze me, man. That's the word, man. Hey, hey, homie, I love the shit out of you, man. You <laughs> so shot that shit. Player, I'm partner. telling you, brother. I'm telling you. You my player. I was telling you. you just, it was this letter I was trying to say to you, man. When I got, when them, when them dudes put out the pistols to me. Man, who was that, man? It was these fools from New York. This gang out there called A-Team. These man. fools was mad because I, I told them I wasn't fucking with them no more. Man, them motherfuckers, I was mad as hell about that shit. But when, I, when they pulled the pistols out, I swear on everything I love. First thing I thought about was reading in your book when you was talking about how you felt when them niggas drew down on you. Ain't that cold? exactly how I felt. The setup, the shit you was talking man, about. The shit, how you just look up and a nigga be like, boom. Right the there at you. Everything was just like that. I'm you, and, when you, and when you was going, when I was reading about the shit that happened to you, I was like, man, this shit is stay like parallel to me. It's exactly I'm the same. telling you, tell everybody. me out. Man, I'm telling you, we start shooting in December, man, and no later than January. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably Propaganda's doing it, right? Oh, that's good. Propaganda's doing it with Polygram. Uh-huh. And with the shit is already, man, I'm telling you, I'm going to plug you in, man. I'm telling you, can't nobody do this shit but you. And it's going to have that Shakur thing. It. All right, I'm going to blow it up. We're going to have that Shakur thing. Hey, I represent it for you. I'm, I'm telling you. all of New York. I got all those New York dudes who hate the West Coast yeah. screaming out your name. Hell in that shit. I, I was passing your autobiography to niggas because they didn't understand West. West side. I'm telling you, hey, I seen you on um, BET one time. It was you and John Singleton, right? Yeah. And you asked John Singleton, you read that book, Do or Die? And he said, yeah, have you read Eat to Live? And Watani was there, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've been following you, brother. Yeah, man. I think John um, Singleton a coward, though. Yeah, I, 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 and I also heard what you did to the Hughes brothers. Yeah, I read, about, I read that article um, that an uh, interview Dream did with you. Yeah. Hughes brothers was cowards, too. Yeah. Man, i just been struggling out here looking for you, man. I need some help, man. I'm telling you, I, I'm here, brother. Nigga, Whatever I can do, man, I'm telling you straight up. I'm, hey, I'm going to plug you in. Got to, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, Pocky. And, and I want to get this uh, this organization started with you. Only we could do it. Uh, Let me tell you the idea. All right. It's like where like we start like this youth league, right? right? Like football league, basketball, football, I mean basketball, football, softball, for girls and boys. I'm yeah. going to get all the rappers to adopt the team. Right. Each rapper have his own team. Coolio have his team. Tratch have his team. I have my team. And we play. And the rappers are the ones that put the money up. We get the field. We right. play. Right. We have, like, the churches come out and sell food. That's real. We had the fathers and the uncles and all of the men in the community. They do security. Right. Get their respect back for the kids and Straight everything. Up. Then we had the FOI come out. We had the deacons from the church. They do security. And we just play football, baseball. You know, get that community spirit going again. I'm with then it, on the weekends, we have block parties. All right. And every rapper got to get up. Every rapper, nigga, if you got a record out, you got to get up for us. You got to come to a free show for the hood. That's real. And it's like a little tour. We, so we do that. We get all the communities back together. Now, I'm talking to Al Sharpton about this. Some other motherfuckers with some power. And then when we do that, we register the voters. And if we can yeah. register them for Democrats, Republican, or Independent. Yeah. Once we register the voters, we have power. Then we start going up to the mayors of these cities and telling them, look, we got this many voters in this city. We want you to do this. We want um, a community center. We start hitting up Nike for the free clothes, the computer yeah. stores for the free computers for each community center. And if they don't, then shit, that's how many people we have in those cities we can regulate. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we telling the mayor, nigga, if you don't do this, then we ain't going to do this. Yeah. We telling them we can clean up the streets. I'm going to have all these tough ass, supposed to be gangster rappers. Straight we're up. We're all get in the van. We're going to travel. L.A. got to be the last place because it's going to be hardest. But yeah. we can do New Jersey, all of that. We're going to drive to all these drug areas, right? Yeah. Imagine me, Red Man, Tretch, Ice Cube, them type of niggas getting out, going up to the 
um, the weapons, the, the main drug dealer on that block, who runs shit? You know, if we get out of a van, be like, what's up, nigga? How y'all doing? What's yeah. up? Yo, who the nigga that runs shit? They're going to take us to that nigga. We invite those niggas to dinner, invite them niggas to some Jean <laughs> Perignon, steak and lobster, and be like, look, player, we asking you, not telling you, we asking you as a player to a player, can you please give us a pass to have these streets clean from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m., 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Right. Let that be for the kids. Let them the niggas be safe during those times. No gunshots, no drug dealers. From 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., y'all can have the streets back. But let us get the streets from these times. Then when we can um, get these politicians. I talked to Al Sharpton. He said he can get the police to, like, chill out um, on those nighttime patrols if, if niggas can get the streets clean from 6 to 11. Hey, but, and you know what else, too, though? When I talk to you face-to-face, I'm going to drop some shit on you, right? Some other stuff, too, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's that, man. You know, I'm with all that, right? And, um, you know, that's the, that's my type of work. Yeah, we need power, man. I'm telling you. Hey, dig it, man. You know, you, hey, I'm telling you. We got power, man. Yeah, we need power. Power is numbers. and yeah. It's like we rappers, you know, man. Why we don't have a, We got the juice. We just ain't doing nothing with it. it, it because it ain't collectivized. Right. i tell you what. Did you see them cats in Chicago? I think they was GDs. Yeah. yeah. Like they, push, they put people in the street. I know. They, they be looking out for me when I come out there. And they be running They, they be running people on the ticket, like, for council. I know. know. They got them. this dude, what's his name? Uh, some nigga they just had out there, but he lost. Yeah, but he Gator. He came close. Gator, yeah. yeah he I'm, came close, though. Yeah. Them some good cats, too, man. I went out there. They be looking out for me, but they be, they be gang. So, like, the one set want me to be down with them. And yeah. The, oh, the, 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 the black stones want me to be with them. Yeah. yeah. And be with them, but... Yeah, I had some. I had to run it with them in Milwaukee because that was when that little kid died. Yummy Sandifer. Yeah, I heard you sent a shout out to him. Yeah, I did a show that next day when, yeah. after they just killed that kid. Yeah. Because you heard what happened, right? Yeah, they executed him. Right, they executed him. And I was I, I was out there when I did the show. Oh, the gang was in the fucking audience. The whole gang had like bought out the stadium. Damn. So I'm rapping to the niggas that just killed this little kid, oh. and they all screaming out "Thug Life," and I, I felt bad. Like, wait did a minute, you? they got it twisted. Yeah. So I start cursing them niggas out like y'all niggas. Cowards, y'all niggas cowards, y'all killed that kid, y'all niggas was punks, man, I hate all you niggas, I hurt all you, them niggas start throwing shit, we had to out in the stadium, damn, it was tough, man, the whole gang tore up the whole neighborhood, but then I started getting letters from that area, where all, like, the mothers, the girls was writing me, like, thank you for doing that, because everybody's scared of these niggas, see, that's what I want to do, that's right, I want to, if these gang niggas ain't going to get straight, then I want to take them out the gang, that's real, because if they don't, it's making trouble on us, yeah, because if you ain't part of the the solution, then you're part of the problem, no and doubt. Therefore, you're going to be trying to whack us anyway. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. shit. You know, business as usual. That's how I feel. But just for the forces of good, man. You know, I'm with all that, Pac. You know, you anytime, anything I can do, brother, you know, uh, yeah. that's what I'm about, man. I've always been uh, less of a talker, more of a doer. It's all good. And, um, you know, I mean, that ain't, you know, that's just my style, man. Yeah, no doubt. You talk to Bone? Yeah, in fact, me and Bone... He said to do something, too. Yeah, Bone is doing... When they shoot the movie, Bone's doing a documentary called The Making the Monster, right? Oh, he is. Yeah, and he's also doing another documentary, man, about, about street... Gang or, yeah, about street organizations. Yeah. Some old footage from the Panthers and stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, the shit is, is fat, man. How's so, Mom's doing? She doing good. She, we just had a show in Vegas. Did she? We had a big-ass show in Vegas, me and the dog, because I'm on death row now. Yeah, hey, man, congratulations. Thanks. Man. You happy over there? Yes, all right, so far. So, right, oh, let me tell you. Hold on one second. All right. What's up with the case, though? Shit, it's going crazy now. I just, damn, hold on one second, please. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, you know I had the, the police case. Yeah, and now, I heard they wanted you to compensate them. They tried to sue me. What? These fools shot at me. And you defended yourself. And they tried to sue me. And white people was crazy because if this was anybody else, they'd give that nigga a ticket tape parade. Straight up. Unarmed man. Two motherfuckers. That was fucked up. Yeah. So they suing me. I got this girl who lied about the rape shit. She's you smoking weed right now, huh? Huh? You smoking weed right now? Nah, cigarette. Oh. <laughs> I will be focusing with my homeboy to come over here right now. Yeah. But um, the girl, see the girl that did this rape shit, she hooked up with the niggas that shot me. Oh, is that right? It's all connected. It was a big plan. I just caught it like at the end, and that's why they shot me. Man, hey man, you gotta stay up, man. When you when you step through that that way, man, you gotta be on point. Bro. I ain't going through there no more. If I do, I'm going with a hundred motherfuckers. Yeah, I'll be one of them. Yeah, no doubt. Because man, no we, can't, is out. we can't be having you not here. You know what I'm saying? I know that's what killed me. But you know what? You know what it was? Here's my problem. Just like I'm feeling you, what you saying? I always, because of where my mom raised me, the way this, this the, um, movement is, yeah. they fuck my head up in a way. See, like you, you could be um, movement orientated, but you got the gangbang shit first in right, your mind. Right. My shit, the gangbang shit comes second to me. Right, right. And now I'm trying to make it come first, because that movement shit will fuck you up. Movement shit got me loving every brother. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And, and, and therefore, you let every brother get next to you. Right. And, and every brother if, got if a chance to whack you. I'm there for you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Nigga need yeah. money, a job, I'm with you. But, and niggas can come up to me with guns on. Niggas be hugging me with texts on. You know what I mean? But dig this, though. You know what? The thing is, man, um, we got to be individuals, too, inside the movement and whatever we're involved in, right? Mm -hmm. We, we got to be able to differentiate between cats that are firm and cats that ain't firm. And sometimes it takes some type of a test, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but when we talk about, for, for instance, me, man, you know, I am who I am. I survived through what I survived through by being intelligent, by, by not al allowing cats to outsmart me, put me in precarious positions where I can get whacked, right? Mm -hmm. So I choose my friends uh, very, very carefully. And I understand there's layers and layers of friends, you see? Mm -hmm. There's some I hold close to the body, man, like a vest, and there's others I hold at arm's distance, and some I just look at, mm -hmm. and some I don't even fuck with, right? But the circle is small, but the ones that are in there, I believe are trustworthy, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, you and I. You and I have been primarily through the same shit, man, in our lives. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? And we're like 10 years apart almost. Mm -hmm. So it's like you and I share a common, almost common destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, what you grew up in is what I came around to. You see what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. you pointed out that the banging shit was first with me, and then the movement. With you, the movement was first, and then the banging was came second. Yes, that's the ill so shit. I'm getting around to where you grew up at. And I'm getting around to where you grew up you at. You see, so, so who else better? You see who can get along than you and I, no and, doubt. and watch each other's back. Cause no you doubt. want it, I want it. No doubt. But together, but you know what I mean. We, yeah. you know, you, you, man, you got the, you got the courage of a gunfighter. When I read that shit, what happened with when Dream Hampton wrote that piece mm -hmm. down there with the pigs, right? Yeah. I was like, it's my boy, man. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Happen. See, that's my, that's another problem. I'm helping another nigga. Nigga, I don't even know. Yeah. Nigga in the middle of the street getting beat up. I'm helping him. He run off and don't even help me. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. These niggas just shot me like when the shit out when white people put when the white cats pulled the gun on me, I was prepared. You know what I mean? I can react. I'm when a nigga thing. pulled the gun on me, I like froze up like, oh shit, a nigga gonna kill me. Yeah. I'm telling you, you know you know what we should do, Pop? Hmm. I'm telling you. Me and you should sit down, right? And we should do a book on you, man. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about trying to do that. Check it out, man. A straight up autobiography or something like that. Based on your life, like Malcolm mm -hmm. had sat down with Alex Haley. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, because the shit that you've been through and I've been through, just like my book, man, I had to document that shit. Hey, your book is a on everything, homie. I'm not just saying this. Your shit is a classic. Okay. Yo, it's niggas. It, when I was up in that jailhouse, yeah. niggas who hated Westside, they don't like nothing. They was loving you. I had motherfuckers speechless. Is that they was right? reading niggas that can't read. Was yeah. reading your shit in one day. Yeah. Nobody could put that shit down. But I'm telling you, hey, hey, but yours would be just as explosive. And I'm telling you, brother, I guarantee you, before we even get through with the book, Hollywood would be on our job. <laughs> you know, I'm doubt. telling you, man. They already, they already want me to do something. I'm shit. telling you. I've been holding them back because I can't get the right one. I asked like my Angelo to help me write an autobiography. She was like, okay, man, but it's but a you, time. You know what you need? And also, too, you know what you need? Somebody to write it from, from all level. Yeah. To kick the slang, to have this shit right. My Angelo might put some perfect English in that motherfucker. And it ain't going to come out right. You like, know, you, you and I, we're going to kick the, the, the language we kick. I think I'll be like your shit. I'm telling you. Hey, but you know what you got to put me here to? What? Overstand. I'm telling you. That, put me here to overstand, that, Okay, man. dig it. This is the thing. All right. Lil' Monster tried to do it one time, but I ain't catching. Okay, dig it. Um, 
the word understand it, it, it it's a play on one's uh, one's person, right? For instance, to understand to stand under, to be below, mm-hmm. to be demeaned, and so when you're under anything, it's hard for you to get a whole view of what's going on above ground. Uh-huh. So when you're under, you have a disadvantage. So, or especially when you're standing under someone or under anything, you can't comprehend it, you can't feel it, you can't vibe with it. So I created the word overstand to get up over that shit. Mm-hmm. To get a vantage point where you're looking down on some shit. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a helicopter got a vantage point over us when we have to get get in the street and break. Right. They can see us better than the pair car at, at our level. So I like that. The helicopter has an overstanding of us to a great degree. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So yeah. what we have to do, and words control people, man. I'm telling you, when you think, when you when you speak positive, you think positive. So all the time, I be trying to overstand shit, get a full comprehension. That's right. You feel me? That's right. So um. Yeah, that's what, that's that's what that's where that came from. That concept came from. Man, I'm so happy you about that shit, man. Man, they had me on. Hey, they I had me like had pops. They had me like pops. I know they had I'm telling you, me and pops was like, cause when they had when they had Matulu over in um, Marion, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we were getting our correspondence on, and he sent me the third code. You know, mm-hmm. of course I endorsed it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then next thing I know, I got a, uh, a, a, a clipping on, on prisoners of war, and they had sent him over thorns. So then we had to do a whole another trip with the mail, right? Uh-huh. And then I just heard that um. Chin had drowned it, but he's yeah, well he's now. Right now. He's not well now. Ain't he? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. He was on respiratory. Yeah, man, I'm in jail too. They telling me this shit. Yeah, but um, the shit that's fucked up is like when Matu, like me and him used to talk all the time. When I first came to LA, yeah. he was like my eyes and ears. I told him everything. Then I think the crackers got a hit that day. He was like. We was talking every day. Yeah. And that, they just killed that shit. I haven't talked to him in, a, in like a year, more than that. Well, still, they, you know, of course, um, you, you, you got legacy movement problems with the pigs. They yeah. can't stand to see you, brother, because you, you of the bloodline. You sure ain't lying. You got them deep roots. They're calling me. Hold on one more time. Right. She was explaining that, right? That they had you in the maximum security prison. Yeah. And I was like, locked down 23 hours a day. That's how they had me. Before man. I even broke a rule. And that's heavy. They didn't even give you the opportunity to break one. They was like, it's for my own protection because I wouldn't sign into D.C. Oh, fuck that. So they got mad, right? Because yeah. he was telling me, you're going to die in here. You're going to die in here. I said, well, I'm going to just have to die. I'm not signing no PC. That's He's right. like, well, we're going to put you in IPC. That's involuntary protective custody. Right, right. So I'm fighting. I'm getting lawyers to fight me to get out of IPC to get me in population. Because yeah. they put me in population the first day I got there, right? And was they it cool? Me, huh? Was Hell it cool? yeah. Even though I'm on the other side, I'm with all enemies. These niggas hate me because I'm throwing up West Side. That's I'm right. banging on the East Coast. That's I'm right. screaming West Side, West Side, nigga. Right. Any team, everything. So, um, but when I get there, the, the pigs didn't give me no, um, they didn't give me no toilet shoes. You know, you come there, yeah. you get that cot, and don't get yeah. nothing else. They made yeah. me, like, it was a bloody cot, blood all on the cot, no nothing. They left me in population for like two hours. In two hours, I had everything I needed. Niggas brought me toothpaste, toothbrushes, That's a cool, banger. Man. Niggas were bringing me knives, weed, heroin, cocaine, everything I wanted. I was like, nah, I'm cool, homie. I don't That's need real. that. I gave niggas the bangers back. I didn't want no bangers. I want, they weren't about to set me up for nothing. That's there was real. three murders there while I was there. Damn, I bet she was jumping up. You was like, damn, man. Uh. We had the highest level of murders in New York State. Damn. Niggas was getting murdered, man. Niggas with the same time I was having. Down the moron. Huh? Yep, they crazy up there. It was popping. Crazy up there. Riot, they had riot. They've they, they, they been hooking you up on the videos. You, were you happy with your videos? Yeah, no doubt. I, I wanted to just keep my face out there. 
Yeah, they shot that shit. Yeah, we finna shoot another video this Wednesday. That's cool, man. Me and Dre finna do this shit called California Love with Roger. Oh, okay. That's gonna be the bomb, man. Give it up for California, man. Yeah, I'll be glad to see you back back out there, too, man. Oh, I got to take it all back, man. I won't be happy till I do it, because they, they got to be sorry for what they did. I'm telling you, hey, I'm with you, man. We got to, man. Hey, but check it out. I want to come down and chill with you, man. Come on, man. What's up? Um, I'll be having um operations from the bottom. Yeah. They be up in there with me kicking it. Yeah, I like them. I, I gave a shout out to them, yeah. But I'm telling you, I got some lyrics, man. Come on, I want, it, Nick, you come with some lyrics, you can spit on any one of the songs I got. I got some shit, I'm telling you. That's for sure, we could do a song. You just gotta come on, I'm in the studio today, I'm in the studio every day. Okay, but what about, um, Friday? Friday, I'll be there. That's what Sister Soldier coming to. Okay, I'm gonna call you. Uh, by what time you, um, before you be going? I'll be, I, I don't Around reach this till one o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna call you, man. Alright. All right, I'll be here, man. Oh, I love you, man. One love, love you. Hey, too. man, watch yourself, brother. No doubt. I hate that to come there and test shit up for you. Nah, nah. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't don't send me back to Monster Bowl. All right, man. All right, <laughs> come check me, I, man. I will. All right, all right. <laughs> that was Tupac in his own words. Twenty-seven years later. Almost 30 years, I find it odd. After FBI, LAPD, retired Los Angeles detective Greg Kading claims that Sean Combs, AKP Diddy, hired Southside Crips to murder. Tupac Le Shakur. One million dollars was put on his head. Him and Shug. Greg Kading was a lead detective on this case. Him and the government of America know better. They know better. They offer Keefe D a proffer agreement, a proffer agreement that he would not be prosecuted for the dope drugs that he got caught with in 2009 by giving them information on the Tupac assassination. He was the main role in this assassination he was given immunity right then and there, but he has no immunity now. You know why? Because he keep indicating what the FBI said, and he's embarrassing the FBI by keep bringing P. Shitty name up. Y'all call him P. Diddy or Puffer. He's a sodomite. I always suspected P. Diddy to be boule. So when no people from a higher level call down to the boule that a nigga gotta go, just like Jesse set Martin Luther King up, since always that nigga that rolled with white supremacy to get you, it's not the enemy that kills you. It's always your own people working for that dollar bill, that dollar bill, that green note. Pretty soon ain't going to be worth nothing. It's not worth anything. It's not real money, but you could be killed. You see what I'm saying? So. Greg Kading. The LAPD, they know what's going on. After Big and Small's mother opened up the murder case in 2006, LAPD Detective Greg Katie discovered new information leaking Puff Daddy or Puffer 
to the murder of Biggie and Tupac. Biggie's mother, Viola or Voletta Wallace, sued LAPD based on the conspiracy on the popular the popular conspiracy theory that the police covered up the death of her son. Easy E is also linked into a possible government hit. Tupac, who was it first? It was Easy E first, Tupac, and Biggie. Biggie in 1990, no, Easy E in 95. Yeah, Easy e in 95, Tupac, 1996, and Big and Small, 1997. Now, the reason why I say the government was involved with this, it was from a hierarchy position to take Tupac out. And I'm going to tell you why he wouldn't fit into the new equation, things that's going on now in hip hop. This Jewish Defense League, if you look in the Freedom of Information Act, was a Jewish group who was harassing famous entertainers, threatening to kill them if they didn't use them as their protection. And I bet you my bottom dollar that the record label, people like Jimmy Iovine and, 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 and the rest of these, Cohen, whatever his name is, Cohen, all these uh, Jewish record label motherfuckers, I bet you any amount of money those gangsters are linked with the record labels. These people was threatened Tupac's life two weeks before he was shot and killed in Las Vegas. These people extorted money out of Air Wright Easy E. And then he subsequently died of HIV. See, I'm not afraid to look at the hidden hand. I know the hand they killed our brother was black, but who is behind the killing of Tupac Shakur? If you really want to get to the nitty gritty, Greg Kading, why you didn't investigate this Jewish entity? You see what I'm saying? All you got to do is connect the dots. Timeline. There's a book out called The War on Tupac by John Potash. He backs my premise that Tupac was assassinated and it was orchestrated by the CIA, FBI, the unseen hand behind the neutralized Asian of Pac. They neutralized Pac under the Freedom Information Act it's revealed that Tupac was being threatened by the Jewish Defense League who extorted monies from various rap music stars by making death threats, offering protection. Keefe D, 2009, get caught with a bunch of drugs. Died as a life sentence. The government of America, LAPD, know that he has something to do with the murder of Pac. Tie him in with P. Diddy. He's bringing up P. Diddy. Y'all see Keepy D on Vlad TV. He's making all these videos. And this is what got him for bringing the government up in this. He talked about the FBI getting him 
the uh, immunity that he thought he had. He don't have immunity at all. They tricked him because he ran his mouth. This is the only reason why he's arrested because he ran his mouth. He indicate P. Diddy. And P. Diddy did it for who? For the ruling class. So, in 2009, Los Angeles police interrogated Keefe D in connection with Biggie murder in a proffer meeting. Keefe D admitted being involved with, with two-part assassination. And he told law enforcement that his nephew, Orlando Anderson, ain't it funny how Orlando Anderson just showed up at the MGM uh Lobby just walked in there knowing he'd snatch somebody's chain. They was in Vegas to kill Pop. You see what I'm saying? Keefe D criminated himself on a social media platform on Vlad TV and Order Dialogue. So July 18th, 2023, Las Vegas police served a search warrant in the connection with Tupac's murder at the home in Las Vegas at Keefe D's wife's estate or house. Uh, did you know, if you listen to Napoleon, who rapped with the outlaws and Tupac, he, it was revealed that Kevin Hackey one of the so-called uh, people who worked on death row security staff was an FBI agent. Jimmy Iovine, Interscope, white guy who wanted to distribute, distribute death row records, said that he would not distribute the records and let Suge get real security because Suge had bloods as a security team. What the fuck do Jimmy Iovine mean by getting real security? See, they always put the federal government around us, man. They never want us to succeed. Jimmy Iovine knew that there was going to be the rap port cops, L.A. crooked cops who, who sold drugs and everything. They was crooked. He knew they was they was bad. He acted like he didn't know they was bad. And Kevin Hackey, FBI agent. That's proof right there. There's a smoking gun. You know, Gene Deal, the, the former bodyguard of Puffer, let it be known. The puffer set this shit up. He's Boule. So when you got Boule involved, just think, the government probably killed Tupac. And I'm 100% sure that they killed Tupac because he wouldn't fit into the equation of this new gay agenda they got going on right now. You see what I'm saying? Putting the rappers in the dresses, you know, making them uh, push the gay agenda. Uh, they got the rappers pushing the, uh, the, uh, appeal, uh, phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they taking more pills to the head. You know, they rap about, you know, taking Percocets and being on lean. You know, Tupac wouldn't fit the equation of what's going on in hip hop today. See, the white man who runs hip hop, he want to pervert hip hop. And Tupac wouldn't fit in with the gay agenda that's in hip hop. So, with that being said, y'all, I mean, I came with the clear cut evidence, man, you know, that Tupac was murdered by the government, you know. Peace of black power.